my name is Helen Ladd, and for the last 20 years or so, I've been doing work on test-based accountability of schools. The outcome of that research is clear. Holding schools accountable for the test scores of their students, as all states have been required to do under No Child Left Behind, has been a big mistake. But there are alternatives. But now under the new uh, Every Child Succeeds Act, states now have new authority to experiment with alternative forms of accountability. And I encourage states to do that. In particular, I would like to see states develop inspection and review systems of the type used in many other countries. If they do so, children will learn more, teachers, schools will be better, parents will be happier, they won't have to opt out, teachers will be happier, and schools will be much better suited to meet the needs of all their children. Let's start with the limitations of test-based accountability. First is obvious, much too narrow a focus. Surely we have higher aspirations for our education system than simply teaching children how to do well on multiple choice tests in math and reading. Our aspiration should be to help students gain the skills and knowledge they need to participate fully in the economic life of the country, the civic life of the country, and to be fulfilled individuals. Now this narrow focus has all sorts of undesirable implications and unintended consequences. It leads, it has led to narrowing the curriculum, keeping uh, schools from experimenting with new approaches to learning, it's led to teaching to the test, and in some cases, and I'm sure you're all aware of this, to uh, actual cheating by teachers and administrators. Moreover, test-based accountability is unfair to disadvantaged students and to the schools they serve. Evidence is very clear on the relationship between socioeconomic status or disadvantage on the one hand and student achievement. That means that schools serving large proportions of disadvantaged students faces, face far greater challenges uh, than do schools serving more middle class uh, students. In the absence of much broader and bolder approaches to education that pay attention specifically to the challenges that disadvantaged children bring to the classroom, test-based accountability is clearly going to fail. And then finally, test-based accountability was designed to increase test scores, but it, even, it hasn't done that very well at all. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the most recent NAEP test results that showed declines in both reading and math uh, in 2015. But the good news is there is an alternative form of accountability. This is the school inspection and review system. Under such a system, professional inspectors visit schools on a periodic basis. They go into the schools, talk to teachers, talk to principals, read the reports and the documents from the schools, often talk to parents, may visit classrooms. Their goal is to evaluate the quality of the internal school policies and practices uh, in those schools. And then they write public reports, publicly available reports on what they find. And they follow a formal protocol in, in what they write and often can address issues such as the following. Is the school doing a good job or how good a job is the school doing in addressing the needs, understanding, and then addressing the needs of all of its children. Um, now this type of approach has been used in many other countries. It's been used a little bit in some US cities, but it's been used extensively in other countries, such as New Zealand and um, England and the Netherlands. There are lots of benefits from this type of approach. The first and most obvious is that the reports on individual schools provide information that's useful to the schools. And it's useful to district level policymakers because then the district level policymakers know what the strengths and weaknesses of individual schools are and can intervene in positive ways. A second advantage of this approach is it can focus much more broadly on a whole set of activities 
that we care about as we think about the goals, the broader goals of education in this country. And then finally, it's fair to all schools because it's focusing on the internal school policies and practices over which schools have control. And in addition, it can, when schools aren't able to um, meet all the expectations we'd like of them, district makers, policy makers can intervene with more resources or whatever as is necessary. So with the new ESSA, the time is ripe for change. So once again, I urge state policymakers to give up the old test-based accountability of schools and to experiment with this new alternative approach. Now, there's no simple single model that they can just take from other countries and use in this country. They're going to need to experiment. So that leads to a role for those of you who are funders or for the federal government to help states by providing some funding um, for them to start experimenting with this alternative approach and to do the research that would be useful for one state to learn from other states about what approaches work and which don't. Once again, if we move in this direction, and I urge states to do that, schools will be better, children will learn more, parents will be happier, teachers will be happier, and our state education systems will do a much better job and be better suited to meet the needs of all children. Thank you.